I recently upgraded my phone from the OnePlus 2 to the OnePlus 3T, and my, my major concern was that it's gonna be bigger, better, stronger, faster, it's gonna have NFC, but I decided to sit down and do a, just a compare and contrast between the OnePlus One, the OnePlus Two, and the OnePlus 3T. <laughs> OnePlus One came out, they declared it as a flagship killer. It was really hard to get a hold of. You had to have an invite code. You had to know somebody or be somewhere because they really had no idea how well this phone would do. And they were like, we might sell 10,000 units. Turns out they sold a heck of a lot more than that. And they're like, wow, people really want this thing. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, it was running Cyanogen mod. Uh, it had uh, built-in battery, which was a, a point of contention, but there's reasons behind why they chose to go with the, the built-in non-user replaceable battery. It did not have an SD card. It had one SIM chip and it did have NFC. And I was really, uh, really awesome and happy when I got mine. And I was kind of laughing because when I first got mine, I think I had it for a week uh, and I went to set it in my back pocket, missed my pocket completely and shattered the front bezel. And I was like, well, that sucks. I contacted them and said, hey, uh, yeah, this happened. RMA, replacement, cries, how do I get a new one? And it only cost me maybe I think $100. It was whatever the insurance or the, the replacement cost was. It wasn't a whole lot, but it was nice. And it was my bad. So I was like, oops. Uh, and that's where I was like, why don't they have otter boxes for these? Because I had an otter box for my Samsung Note too. And I was like, I, I really need a protective case for these. So I got the protective cover. I had a case with a, with a, with a cover on it, uh, but they didn't have otter boxes. And I was really... Um, I was really disappointed in that. But being that it was a first time phone and that they hadn't really contacted an OtterBox, they didn't know what was gonna happen, I was really impressed with what they did and how they, uh, you know, what, what was available and, and it, was, it was good, it was a great phone. And for the time it came out, this was a few years back, uh, it, it really was comparable to some of the flagships. Of course, as soon as it came out and you got a hold of it, you're like, yes! Uh, the next Samsung came out, the next LG came out, the next, uh, you know, the next iPhone came out. So it was suddenly, it killed what was currently there, but it was quickly dethroned by, by the new devices. And so they went ahead and set out to make the OnePlus 2. It came out just under a year later, and it wasn't bad. It was actually, again, really great. And it rivaled that which was currently on the market. But as things go, it was quickly dethroned as the flagship killer. And one of the things that were really big points of contention of this phone had the outer box, which was awesome, but they removed the NFC. And they did this because they found in their research into their phones and into the usage of their phones that uh, nobody was using it. And they decided, hey, it's not gonna be that necessary. And so they pulled it out and it kept costs down. But the, 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 the lack of foresight for where NFC was going was a bit of a problem because Apple Pay was just coming into fruition, uh, Android Pay was coming into fruition, and those were going to be things that were gonna be necessary uh, for the future of phones and that they have to have NFC. Some people use them, not a whole lot of people use them, not a whole lot of people know what you can do with them. Uh, and that, that was, I think that's just an NFC marketing problem. We need, to, we need to really go back through and reevaluate what exactly is it that NFC can do, where it can go, and I think I'll explore that at a later time, but for right now, this one didn't have it. But they did, with the OnePlus 3 and the OnePlus 3T, they did NFC, and they put the antenna directly behind the, the camera, which I thought was a great idea when you have like an otter box in place, but in the grand scheme of things, it didn't work on the device that I was looking to use, which was the NFC implant that I have in my hand. It works with the OnePlus One. It does not obviously work with the OnePlus Two. And even though NFC is available in the OnePlus Three and Three T, I can't get it to read my chip at all. Uh, and I think that's just because these chips are small. They don't have the largest, uh, you know, antenna. And I don't think the NFC, uh, the power to the NFC antenna is that. Uh, is that powerful to bypass the camera. But any other device that I've attempted to use, like I've got a small uh, Bluetooth speaker that has an NFC, uh, an NFC device in the back, so you just put this to the, put the Bluetooth speaker and it says, hey, would you like to pair with this Bluetooth device? Yes. Don't even have to, no pairing, no pairing code, none of that. You just beep and it's good to go. 
uh, and that works really well. And it works with any other device that I've tried it with. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of time to check out with uh, like NFC tags that you'd place around the house, which would be really useful for any kind of home automation, where if you have your phone tied into devices, you can walk in and instead of flipping a light switch, you can just hold this to, you know, hold this to a spot on the wall and it would read the tag and uh, you know, turn all your lights on uh, because it's this time of night. It's gonna turn them on this brightness, whatever. You know, that's home automation stuff. We'll get into that later on. Let's go through a short list of things that I did to just compare these phones. The first thing that I did was run the N22 benchmark uh, against all three phones side by side just to see how well, and you can see exactly how well the OnePlus One was able to model the 3D. The OnePlus Two was a little bit better, but still a little choppy. And the OnePlus 3T was like screaming phenomenal. The other thing I wanted to test was the LCD screen. So I tested both the brightest and the darkest setting and compared all three. And as you can see that the screen's dynamic uh, brightness is, is improved drastically between the OnePlus One, the OnePlus Two, and the 3T. As noted, the OnePlus One, Two, and Three all have internal batteries, and this people are like complaining. It's like, what happens when your battery dies? Well, that is a that's a real concern. When your battery finally just cuts out and you're just like, oh, don't know what is going on anymore. We have to replace the phone. You can't just replace the battery like with the older, uh, like the Note Two, for example. I had the Note Two. You could replace the battery. And there's several phones that can still do that. But part of the reason why they go with internal batteries is the transportation of a phone with a battery uh, that is replaceable. They have to technically, even if they ship them in the same box, they're technically shipping two items. And because it's a lithium battery, they have to go through an entire set of regulations for shipping batteries in addition to shipping a electronic device. Another thing to note is that the OnePlus One, OnePlus Two, and OnePlus 3T, none of them have SD card expandability, which a lot of people complain about because some people use a lot of memory and they can just drop in a 128 gig card, they can drop a 256 gig card in, and suddenly, bam, you've got a lot of uh, a lot of internal storage that you can you can run with. Uh, I know with the OnePlus Two, uh, when I was shooting 4K video with my phone, I would run out of space very quickly. So I just stopped carrying music on my phone uh, and just used it strictly for recording video because I would run out of memory and have to dump the phone, run out of memory, dump the phone. An SD card would be nice. But what they have done uh, in compared to the OnePlus One, to the OnePlus Two, and the 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 Three T and the Three have dual SIM chips. So you can pop out, you can put in a SIM chip for your local carrier, and then if you travel, you can have a, a, an international carrier, or you can get to a local space and it's like, oh, I'm in China, or I'm in Taiwan, or I'm in uh, Germany, I'm in, I'm in England, I'm in France, you get the idea. You can get a local SIM chip, dump it in there, and not have to remove your original SIM chip. The idea came up, is like, why not dump the secondary SIM and use that space for a SD slot? Another difference between the OnePlus One, the Two, and the Three T, the OnePlus One uses a micro USB slot, where the OnePlus 2 and the OnePlus 3T use a Type-C connector, which is great because it's reversible, it's, it's fantastic in that half-factor. But the problem you run into is that these phones are still only USB 2.0. One of the other features that they added to the OnePlus 3 and 3T is that it has dash charging, which is a four amp power plug. You have to use the dash cable and it will charge your phone from 15% to 100% in less than an hour. Uh, I, I keep forgetting to check exact time because it's like half an hour. I'm like, oh, I'm at 90%. I'll just walk away. But that does not work with the OnePlus 2. Even though I can use the dash cable and the 4 amp power brick, the OnePlus 2 will only charge at regular speeds. Now, if you use a different cable with the OnePlus 3T in the dash charging power plug, even though it's a USB Type-C, it only will work as uh, 2 amps. It will not do a dash charge which I thought was interesting, which means that they've done something special to the cable. Another really nifty feature about the OnePlus 2 and the OnePlus 3T is the front-facing camera. And normally it's like, yeah, who cares? It's a front-facing camera. And one of the things that I had an issue with with the OnePlus One, and with actually most front-facing cameras, is that, that generally, and this is with the older cameras where the OnePlus One was involved, uh, you know, that one, what that one was competing with, is that they could only do a 720p front-facing video. So if you wanted to do like a, a you know, a selfie video, of some sort or another, or if you're just trying to take a video where you can actually see what you're looking at so you can frame it right. I generally shoot 4K, so I'm like facing it to myself and everybody else can see what I'm recording. Uh, but when you're shooting front-facing camera, the OnePlus One could only do 720p. The OnePlus Two and the OnePlus 3T can both do a 1080p video from the front-facing camera, which is really awesome. Now, that being said, all of the rear-facing cameras, they can all do 4K. 
Now, one of the things I'd like to note is the, uh, the, the rear-facing camera for the OnePlus One had a much narrower field of view than the OnePlus Two and the OnePlus 3T, as you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison where I was filming some Magic Cards. It wasn't a wide-angle lens as much as the other two phones were, uh, which is great in certain aspects, but then when you look at the comparison of the actual photo quality between the OnePlus One, the OnePlus Two, and the OnePlus 3T, you can see the clarity, the focus, the, the detail, and they can all do RAW, which is awesome, but the, the clarity of detail that they can all do is definitely improved over the years. So in conclusion to all of this, what I'm really just trying to say is that it's really nice to see that the company is taking what they've learned from the first phone that they came out with, and they're trying to improve upon it. Now, while they did make a mishap with the NFC chip with the OnePlus 2, that was because they, had, they were actually paying attention to their users, they were paying attention to how people were using their phones, and they tried to improve upon the design, keep costs down, and still give everyone what they were using and what they wanted. And unfortunately, with the shift of the market and with the, the introduction to Apple, and uh, Android Pay, that those devices and that functionality being more and more popular and becoming more and more usable, uh, that was a slight mishap. That being said, my name is Kane. Hope this video was helpful. If you like it, uh, you can subscribe down below. You can leave comments. Check out thermalarmor.com where we got some merchandise that's kind of kicking up and, and moving forward. And look forward to this very soon. See you guys next time.